Juliet Sobonet, and today we're so excited to be chatting with the best-selling author of A Paris Apartment, Michelle Gable. Welcome to the show, Michelle. Thank you so much for having me. Any chance to talk about Paris is a good one. Me too. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Um, so tell us a little bit about the book, about A Paris Apartment. So it's based on a true story. Um, in 2010, my agent sent me this article she had seen about a Paris apartment hence the title. Um, in the south of France, a woman had passed away. She was over 90 years old. And when they went through her estate, they found out that she'd had this apartment in Paris that she locked in 1940, fled, and never returned in 70 years. When they opened it up, it was just filled with floor to ceiling, endless treasures, artwork, furniture, um, knick-knack, everything you can imagine. As it turns out, the woman who passed away, her grandmother was a famous courtesan of the era. And so this was a great seed for a story. And my agent, she knew I had a love of Paris. She knew I traveled there quite a bit for my job. And so she said, you know, I think you can do something with this story. And, and I did. Wow. That's such an interesting premise. Yeah, it, it really is. It's that nugget of truth and not that much is known about it. So I could really let my imagination wander. And I interweave two stories, a modern day, a Sotheby's expert who's tasked with going through the pieces in the apartment, and she is all too happy to um, escape to Paris because she has some personal problems back in New York. So she's all too happy to get get swept up in Paris. <laughs> and then um, she finds the journals of the courtesan, and that's where the historical piece comes into play. Okay. Wow. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. So, it was a ton of fun to write. I bet. Um, so for the historical part, did you have to do a lot of research? I did. I actually had to do a lot of research for both pieces because I'm not, my his, my background's not in the high, high um, end art auction world. So it, I really did. I did a lot for both. Um, I actually found journals of a courtesan. And she was actually a courtesan turned princess turned nun. Whoa. So she was a little <laughs> interesting, a little more, um, you know, the, the journals in this are, are a little more rival because, you know, she doesn't have the nun aspect to her. Um, so I, I, you know, looked at articles, books, um, old gossip columns mm -hmm. from back then. You know, we think of ourselves as being celebrity obsessed, but they were just as bad. And um, just try to interweave, though it's fiction, I tried to include the people that she would have consorted with, uh, the things she would have cared about, the events she would have attended, mm -hmm. and in stirring that beautiful, the Gilded Age, yeah. you know, before the First World War when, every, you know, the, uh, the arts and literature flourished and before they really knew, you know, was, the good times will never end, right. you know, there'll be no wars, and it was just a really beautiful period, so it was a lot of fun. That's so interesting. So for the modern day story, um, do you, did you see yourself at all in your main character? No, I don't. No. I mean, you know, she does some things I wouldn't do personally. And, it, and she's from California, which okay. I'm from, so we had that commonality. But she li lives a very different lifestyle, working for Sotheby. She has many master's degrees. She's very well schooled in this, in her career. And, um, you know, she's having troubles in her marriage, and she's just kind of at a crossroads. So other than the fact that we both have um, a love for Paris, that, that's another commonality. Yeah. So tell us about your love for Paris. When did you first um, fall in love with I started going city? there for work. My uh, first, one of my first couple jobs out of college, I worked for an investment fund, and we had a European fund, and so they sent me there um, to look at some deals, Paris and a few other but, countries, but it was my first time ever traveling internationally, mm -hmm. and I was by myself, and I would take the weekends to explore on my own, which is kind of crazy when I think about it now. I'm not that adventurous, but, mm -hmm. you know, I was by myself, and didn't really know, you know, the language or the people, but, I, you know, I just started exploring. And then as I went more and more, I just felt, you know, this affinity for it. And, and I felt comfortable there over time. Yeah. That's so neat. What do you love most about Paris? There's so much activity, but yet there's the balance of the activity and then the leisure time where you take your time at meals and you really enjoy, mm -hmm. you know, the wines and the food. And I, and, and just the beautiful, the history of the place and the architecture, just everything. And then there are just so many little pockets. You know, you have the medieval mm -hmm. places that are, you know, the newer, newer, you know, more the houseman architecture. And 
there's just so many different ways to look at the city and plus, you know, endless places to eat and, mm -hmm. you know, museums to see and it's just, it's so alive yet it, you know, you can take your time to enjoy it. You can, yeah, it's definitely a city for that, for mm -hmm. both running around and enjoying the city and then just sitting back and having a glass of wine. Exactly, <laughs> there's not too many places like that mm -mm. In, in this world, I find. No. Have you um, traveled back over there a lot? Oh. Yes, I, um, I was just there a couple months ago, and then I went there with my family last summer. Um, we rented a Paris apartment. My parents had been there quite a bit. We went with my parents, but my husband and my daughters had never been. Okay. So it was kind of this chance to um, all go together, celebrate the book. It was my birthday, my father's birthday. Oh, neat. And so it was really neat to, to show the girls the city and my husband as well because he had never been. I'd only ever been by myself. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. So what was your experience like going by yourself versus taking the whole fam? Well it was crazy because of course since they'd never been you know they wanted to see all the you know Eiffel Tower, mm -hmm. Louvre, you know and and you know with with younger kids they're not that young but you know mm -hmm. their their patience maybe for uh, right. <laughs> museums, museums is somewhat limited <laughs> compared to mine. It was really neat to see it through their eyes and you know they still talk about it a lot and you know, to show them kind of little spots. And then when I went back uh, about a month or so ago, mm -hmm. you know, we would be passing by places. Oh, I remember eating there, you know, with my family. And mm -hmm. so it was really neat. And my parents also are very well traveled and they've spent way more time in Paris than I have. So it was also great to have them along to show our little, you know, their favorite spots mm -hmm. and little out of the way, tucked away places that they love um, that, you know, I wouldn't have found on my own because that's right. part of it too. You can't find everything there's so much, and a lot of it's not in the guidebook. Right, it's endless. Yeah. Um, do you have any favorite Paris anecdotes or travel stories? Well, I have a funny one from that trip. Yeah. It was kind of the end of the trip, and, and we were trying to pack everything in at the last minute, you know, uh, all the touristy things that my husband wanted to see, you know, check the box. you got to see the Mona Lisa and this. So we had gone to the Louvre for, you know, a couple hours, the smallest amount of time, and then we were supposed to meet my parents at this restaurant, um, we were staying the 16th and this restaurant was way in the 11th, like, you know, and not even that close to the metro. And so it was quite a distance to go and it was kind of a hassle and it's, you know, very hot. It's this, it's this, it was this exact time last year. And so we're going and, you know, the girls are kind of, my daughters are kind of complaining and it's the end of the trip and we, and, and my husband goes, this better be the best restaurant in all of Paris. <laughs> well, one week later, we happened to turn on the TV back at home mm -hmm. in San Diego and it was the best restaurants in Paris. And they're like, number one, at Bistro Paul Bear. And it was this restaurant. <laughs> so I'm like, look, it was the best restaurant in all of Paris. And he's laughing. So I, it just, you know, makes me laugh. That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have any future Paris books planned? I have a book coming out in February called I'll See You in Paris, and it's not a sequel, although um, some of the time period is somewhat similar, so there's a few uh, guest appearances, okay. shall we say, by characters in a Paris apartment. Oh, but it takes place in Oxfordshire, England, and in Paris, kind of everything resolves itself in Paris, and it's different areas explore than the ones in this book, oh, so okay. there's cool. still that Paris element. Nice. Because, you know, you can't resist going back. Yeah. So in a Paris apartment, um, where do you take the reader in Paris? So uh, most of it takes place in the ninth near the opera um, in that area because that's where the apartment was that was found. But but the main character, April, does explore some of the tourist hot spots. Not quite the Eiffel Tower, but maybe the next tier down. And then in El Cio in Paris, it's more the East Saint-Louis mm -hmm. is where it takes place. Okay. Very nice. Are you planning to go back to Paris for research or for fun anytime yep. soon? Yep, I'm actually planning to go back in September. Um, my book comes out in French in September, and so uh, my French publisher has arranged a signing in an old Parisian library with the press and everything, so I'm really looking forward to that. I think that's just going to be my husband and myself. Oh, nice. That'll be good. Yes. So you can have a little romance in exactly, Paris. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Do you have any romance in the t weaved into these two books? Little there, love is, story. there is. There yeah. is. In a Paris apartment, there's a romantic element. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a straight romance, but um, the main character, again, is at a crossroads in her marriage, and she meets a very handsome Frenchman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then in I'll See You in Paris, there's a young woman in um, the 1970s who's lost her fiancé in the Vietnam War, and she goes to help this um, old, older culture lady in um, Oxfordshire, England, who turns out to be a, a duchess. And when she's there, she meets this writer who has lived uh, most of his life in Paris. So there's 
perhaps a romance yeah. there. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Fun. Thanks so much for being here with us today, Michelle. Thank you so much for having me. It was so much fun. It was fun. If you're interested in reading more about Paris, check out Michelle's book, A Paris Apartment. And I'll see you in Paris coming out this February.